Hi guys, let me start with a story uh, and it happened with me. Couple of months back, one of my great friends, Dr. Rohit, who is a neurosurgeon in Pune, he came to meet me along with his son who completed his 10th uh, standard and both of them were curious to know about possible career opportunities in creative design. Obviously, they wanted to know about various specializations, what are the design schools, what are the courses, what are the opportunities, what are the jobs. And you know, his son showed a special interest in what is human-centric design. You know, to explain what is human-centric design, I just pulled a sheet of paper and drew a, a, a graph you know, on which a, a pace at which humans and human brain is growing you know and is as we all know over the ages the the graph has been quite linear stable and very predictable on the other sheet i drew a graph on which we uh, we, we just discussed about the pace at which the technology is exploding and you know it's huge it's scary it's it's a humongous the gap if we see uh, between the human brain and the technology in the earlier days was this much and as we see it's growing at an exponential space uh, and with, with the advent of this AI, machine learning, autonomous cars, robotics, haptics, blockchain, cryptocurrency, singularity, oh boy, it's, it's, it's a too much, you know, it's almost like a hockey stick. Gap is scary. Gap is ever expanding, is putting a lot of challenges for the human beings to adopt to this uh, emerging uh, technology. But yes, it's an opportunity for all of us, especially for young people like you. And the opportunity is to humanize that technology using your creative brains, your, your fresh ideas and out of the box thinking. Rohit and his son were super excited. Actually, his eyes of his son actually blew. And almost he jumped and he said, I would like to make a career in human-centric design. Both of them got the answers. But the big question remained with me. What next? What is next for design? Before that, let's reflect upon what all has happened so far. Human-centric design has done an outstanding job. Uh, we have solved so many complex problems. The collaboration that we have done with various disciplines like IT, engineering, psychology, sociology, art is great. The methods, tools and techniques we adopt like empathizing with the users, understanding their behavior, context, experiences, values is great. We already have become integral part of various domains, maybe fintech, education, retail, manufacturing, law and justice, supply chain, everything. It's one of the upstream fields for young people, you know. But the question which we all should ponder upon, what is next? Are we guys designing for the world we live today or tomorrow? Should our solutions be focused or centered only on human beings? Is he the only component of the bigger ecosystem? Are we designing too much for a rational economic man having calculator in his head, cash in his hand and ego in his heart. Are we minimizing the chances of creating more problems? And most important, very, very important question, are the existing methodologies and tools solving the current problems of dynamically interconnected world, socio-economically changing context and ever-evolving ecosystem? This is what we need to address together. Let me share a couple of stories and examples we all can correlate. First example, scarecrow. 
we all know right so a, a group of undergraduate students what they did they came up with a very interesting solution you know uh, they they made a intelligent scarecrow in which they put some microprocessors uh, a solar battery operated uh, surveillance camera which can uh, revolve you know 70 20 degrees and which has got around 60 to 100 feet uh, range and any birds or animals which are coming you know it can throw uh, the cannon of water and it would uh, give that pre-recorded uh, sound of gun blasting and just hawk streams you know and uh, it, it helped uh, the farmer that the farmer gets SMSs or the text messages every after an hour and also images were sent saying you know your farm is safe good part farmer can focus on his work he can go ahead and do other activities his anxiety was minimized good ideas good solution the question to ponder upon is it solving the problem at large whether all the birds which are being repelled by the intelligent scarecrow uh, is it the right kind of approach ecologically it is found that 46 species of the bird are helpful for the crops what would happen to the uh, to the birds and the animals who could not enter the farm and what uh, like what would be what would be happening for other insects birds soil water pollination so on and so forth second example is uh, a, a story of glowing antlers uh, you know in, in scandinavian countries uh, denmark finland norway there, there are habitats of reindeer and uh, it was found that around 4,000 reindeers were getting killed in the road accident, especially in the month of November, December, which are the dark months where the visibility is less. The drivers used to come and hit the reindeers. So a team of professionals, what they did, they devised, they invented a reflective paint and they tried to put the paint on various parts of reindeer. Eventually they decided the paint should be applied on the antlers. You know, it's, it's a great thing. So what happened? The drivers could notice the, the reindeers, you know, and they could apply the, the, the brakes. Great idea. So what would happen is uh, the, the number of accidents on the road went down. When it was studied further, it was observed that the, the, the hawks, the bears and the wolves could easily identify the reindeers because the, the, the antlers were growing. It was like a, 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 a nicely decorated cake kept on the dining table. The, the broader question to us, you know, is it solving the problem of ecosystem? whether the linkages and connections were considered while devising the solution and is there not a life beyond drivers and the reindeers if we look at the jungle at large. These two interesting examples will help us to look at design from a different perspective and this is how move away from short termism and immediate gratification to long-term strategic thinking philosophy, expand the canvas of interdisciplinary approach with critical thinking about business, societal, economical, and environmental impact. And let's make sure that providing solutions for one group of beneficiaries is not adversely impacting the broader and deeper ecosystem. I'm ending my talk with Doha by Kabir. It says, साई इतना दीजिए जहाँ मैं कुटुंब समाए मैं भूखा न रहूँ साधु न भूखा जाए। It means, oh God, give just enough to human beings, plants, animals, rivers, trees, so that no one is hungry and each one will get appropriately fed. It's our collective responsibility to evolve from human-centric design approach 
to humanity centric systems thinking approach by reimagining our philosophy perspectives and belief systems thank you